weeks will be our third week in a series called Next. A couple weeks ago, we did this big push on um, salvation, and 58 people made a first-time commitment to accept Jesus Christ into their life. 58 people. We had over 800 cards and responses of people from recommitment to saying, I'm surrendering my life completely to the Lord. And it's just been amazing to see what God's doing in, our, in the hearts and lives of, of us in the network. And one of the things we want to do as a staff is like, okay, what's next? What do we need to do to help those people that made the decision to make the next steps that are necessary? So we started a series called Next. And um, so last uh, week, Pastor Mike spoke about God is right, therefore I obey. And two weeks before that, he spoke about God is faithful, therefore I have faith. And today we're going to look at contentment. And basically, what is contentment? We're saying God is enough, therefore I am content. God is enough, therefore I am content. And I don't believe God is just enough. I believe God is more than enough, therefore I am content. And so many times in our life, we run after, we pursue other things, and we spend our energy running after this, running after that, when in the end, the one we really need is God. And we need to recognize and realize that he is not just enough, but he's more than enough. And we don't learn that overnight, but we learn that through a process. And as we learn this process of God being a more than enough, then we find ourselves in true contentment with God. And maybe even having this state of contentment, no matter what's going on in our life, we know as long as God's there and he's more than enough, I'm going to be all right. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to be all right, baby. It's going to be all right. <laughs> God is not just enough, but he's more than enough. And this morning, we're going to look at a story of the life of Paul the Apostle, a great man of God that was radically converted, changed, and transformed. But he learned the secret of contentment through a process. He didn't get there overnight, but he learned this amazing secret in this amazing process with God and this relationship he had with God that brought him to this place of contentment that no matter what was going on in his life, no matter what was going on around him, he had contentment with God. Amen. And that's the difference. You know, not just being complacent with what's going on, not just settling with what's going on, but being content with God that he is going to work everything out for your good and to your favor. So let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to read verse 7 to 10 together. And we're going to read the New Living Translation. And I just like the way it reads. Some of the words really um, pop in this passage of Scripture. So let's read this together. And let me just set up when Paul is actually writing this. He is, he is uh, talking about all these amazing things God's doing, all these things God's revealing to him. He went to the third heaven. He's having all these visions and all these dreams. And so Paul wouldn't get in pride. God allowed this circumstance to happen in his life. So let's read starting at verse 7 together. Even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. So here Paul's pleading. And what does God say? My grace is all you need. <laughs> Let's keep reading. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Let's read the last passage here. That's why I can take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. So here, Paul, this is going on in his life. He's getting all these great revelations, all these visions, all these dreams. God's speaking to him. God's revealing himself to him. God's doing these amazing things in his life. But to protect Paul from getting in pride, God allowed this messenger of Satan to come along and basically torment Paul so that Paul could recognize truly where his help came from and it didn't come from, hell, from him. Where, where Paul's source was, it wasn't in Paul, it was in God. And guys, our help is in God. Our help is found in God. So contentment is, is, is three things happen with this whole idea. Of, as we go on this journey and learning contentment, three things happen. Number one, contentment reveals whose we are. 
when we are content, when we understand God is more than enough, it's revealed to us whose we are. Who do we belong to? We are gods. We belong to God. We don't belong to society. We are gods. You don't belong to your circumstance, your situation. You belong to God. And as Paul had this revelation with God, this revelation only came from God because Paul had relationship with God. And as he had this relationship with God, Paul grew in his understanding of who he was in God. Guys, as you and I have a relationship with God, as you and I grow in this relationship with God, we begin to understand more and more whose we are and who we are. And what true humility is, is not walking around like I'm just a wretched old person. True humility is knowing who you are and whose you are. That's where what true humility is. So here we got Paul walking along life. God's doing all these amazing things. And this tormenting spirit comes to harass him. And God used that test, used that circumstance in Paul's life to show Paul who he really was and who he truly belonged to. The circumstances in our lives, God will use to reveal to us whose we really are. So at the, end, the, at the end of the day, come hell or high water, we know who we are and whose we are. Let's read this passage of Scripture together. Verse 7. To keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing great revelations that came from God, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Wow. Wow. So he didn't get proud and cocky. So he didn't get arrogant. God allowed the circumstance to come along. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that just how God even works today? We think we're all that and a bag of chips and a chocolate bar. And God allows a circumstance to come along to sort of knock us off our feet. And we really realize who we are and whose we are. And where we got to, we didn't get there by ourselves. Oh, maybe I need to talk to this side of the church. Where we got, we didn't get by ourselves, but it was God that brought us there. God will always allow us. God will always allow us to be in a position in life where we need him more and we need him most. So Paul learned this place of contentment. And as he was learning to be content with who God was, it really revealed to Paul who he was and whose he was. When I gave my life to the Lord, 16 years old, I was pretty messed up. Pretty mess up. Didn't know really who I was and where I was going, what was going on in my life. But as I began to pursue God and develop this relationship with God, and I spent time in God's Word and grew in my relationship with God, I began to know who I was in God and whose I was. And regardless of the circumstance and situation that went on in my life or was going on in my life, my identity wasn't in that. My identity was in God. And that's what God wants to do for us today. Regardless of what's going on in your life, what's going on in your circumstance, he doesn't want that to define you. He wants to be the one to define you. And he wants to reveal to you who you are and whose you are. And you belong to God. You are a child of God. If you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ today, you are a child of God. So as you learn contentment, God will reveal to you whose you are. Number two, contentment redirects the path we are on. Redirects. It like changes our thinking. It changes our course of action. Contentment changes the direction we're going on. Look at verse 8 and 9. Three times... Let's read this together. I plead it with the Lord to take it away from me. Take what? This thorn, this torment, this harassment. Take this away from me. But he said, God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Two things happen in this passage of Scripture. With the direction Paul was going in, he was redirected. The first thing, let's look back at this verse. Three times I pleaded with the Lord, take this thing away from me. 
And what was God's response to him? My grace is enough. Here Paul is pleading for deliverance, and God redirects his path and gives him grace. Three times Paul is pleading, deliver me, and God redirects him and brings him to this place of contentment in his circumstance. Not contentment for the circumstance, contentment in the circumstance. That if God brought me to it, he will bring me through it. So many times when we're in the midst of circumstance, in the midst of situations, we are pleading with God to deliver us out of the circumstances rather than deliver us through the circumstance. And hear what God wanted to do. God wanted to deliver Paul through the circumstance. So here he's pleading three times, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me. And God said, my grace is all you need. My grace is enough. My power will be displayed in your weakness. So let's see the second part that happens with Paul. Let's look at this verse again. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. He's redirected. Paul went from boasting in what God was doing in him, what God was doing through him, and all these revelations he was having at the first part of that passage of Scripture to begin to boast in his weaknesses. He began to see how God could even use his weaknesses to display his glory. Guys, what weakness do you feel you have? Could God bring his glory and his grace upon it and use it for his glory like he did with Paul? You're pleading with God to take this thing away from you. Take this thing away from you. Could that be the very thing God wants to use to bring his grace upon that people can see the glory of God in and through your life? God's grace rested upon his weakness. And God displayed his power through his weakness. Wow. Only God that's more than enough could do something like that. I gave my life to the Lord. And I would plead with the, with the Lord every day. Oh, God, deliver me. Deliver me from this. These, these, these areas I see in my life. Oh, Lord, deliver me. Deliver me. I want instant deliverance. You know what God spoke to my heart one day? I'm not going to deliver you instantly. (laughs) It's going to be through a process. And through that process, I'm going to build into your life integrity, character, and stability. And he said, if I were to deliver you instantly, you would expect everybody else's deliverance to be instant. And you would not have the grace I need for you to have to walk them through what they're going through. God knew my future. He knew he was going to call me into ministry. He knew I was going to be a preacher, and I needed grace. So many times we are pleading with God to deliver us out of something when he wants to deliver us through something. He wants to redirect our path. Contentment reveals whose we are, redirects the path we're we're on, and number three, refines what we become. Refines what we become. Through this process of contentment, God will refine us. God will use circumstances in your life to refine you. Yes, maybe even to kill your flesh, kill you and I, so more of God can be seen. You with me on that? He will use circumstances in our lives to refine us. Look at verse 10 with me of chapter 12. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. In them, I rejoice in them. Why? Because when I'm at my weakest, I truly am my strongest. Because I'm relying on on God. And what God used in Paul's life, the persecutions he went through, the insults, the hardships, God used those hard times in his life to refine him, to bring him to this place of contentment in life that no matter what is going on around me, God is with me, God is in the midst of it, and he will bring me through, and I will come out better than I was before through the power, through the glory of God in my life. 
Don't let circumstances define you. Let them refine you. A goldsmith. Gold, silver. It's refined. What happens in that refining process? As the heat is turned up, as the fire is turned up, what happens when that gold and that silver is melting down? The impurities come to the top. And the goldsmith scrapes off all the impurities. Then he cranks up the heat a little more. And the impurities then again rise to the top. And the goldsmith scrapes off the impurities. Then he turns up the heat, the fire, a little more. And what happens? The impurities rise to the top. And the goldsmith swipes off the impurities. And he keeps doing that until he sees his reflection in the gold. Let me tell you something today, church. The goldsmith is God, and he will use circumstances in your life to refine you and I. And he wants to bring us to a place of contentment that no matter what is going on in our life, no matter what is happening, because God is more than enough, because God is with me, everything is going to be all right. The amazing thing about this story of the goldsmith is the goldsmith never leaves the gold during the process. God is our goldsmith and he will not leave you nor forsake you through the process of being refined. And at the end of it, he will see his glory. He will see his image reflected in and through your life. Let him use those hard times so that his glory is seen in your life and reflected through your life. It's easy to reflect God when everything's peachy and fine and dandy. But the real test comes when life gets hard. He wants his image to still be seen even then. So where are you at in this this, this process of contentment? Where are you at in this process of God being not just enough, but truly more than enough? That all your sufficiency comes from him, not from you. Where are you at? Or are you still fighting and wrestling and trying to get out of this place that God may be wanting to use to bring you to a place of contentment in him where you really realize he is more than enough. He is who you need. He is what you need. <laughs> he wants to reveal to you in this process whose you are. He wants to redirect the path you're on. Maybe not deliver you out of it, but deliver you through it. Take your weakness and use it for his glory. Refine you so that where you feel you're the weakest, he becomes the strongest and he displays his glory. Contentment. Our God is just not enough, but he's more than enough. Let's pray together. Team's going to come up and lead us in another song. And some of you need to make that statement today, God, you're enough. You're more than enough. And I'm not going to find contentment any other way than through you. And through this process, bring me to this place in my life of contentment with you. No matter what's going on in my life, as long as you're there with me, it's going to be all right. It's going to be good. Reveal whose I am through this process. Redirect the path. Redirect my thinking. And refine me to become more like you. That's you this morning. As the team leads us in this song, we're going to invite everybody to stand. We're going to open the altars. I want you to come and just make that statement, Lord, you're more than enough. Therefore, I can be content. I can be content with you, God, no matter what is going on in my life. Reveal yourself to me. 
redirect my path and refine me for your glory. Stand with us as the team leads us. Please, nobody moving at this time. Respect those that are around you. And uh, we will pray with you as you respond as the team leads us.